Well, good morning. Here we are at the end of another week. It's been a good one talking about Sabbath all week. And uh, we began uh, with just kind of a general definition of it on Monday and talked about Sabbath as transition, getting from one spiritual place to another on Tuesday. And then the deep transformation that can take place from a sense of Sabbath on Wednesday. And then yesterday, uh, we continued on by talking um, about uh, the, the, the sanctity of uh, Sabbath in general. Um, we want to go on to our uh, empowerment. Our, I'm sorry, yesterday we talked about nourishment, beg your pardon. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about Sabbath as empowerment. It's a big word. But before that, uh, since it's Friday, I have to pause for a moment for a word from our sponsor. Uh, I have a note right here and it says, you need to say these things. And so uh, the word from our sponsor today is to be sure to join us on Sunday at 11 a.m. It's uh, kind of different than our normal time because the diocesan service is at 10 a.m. We have our morning prayer at 11 a.m. and it's a different Zoom code. Let us know if you need it. And actually we could probably put it right on the chat line for you so that you can write it down and, um, and join us for 30 minutes of morning prayer from the Sanctuary of St. Christopher's. And then next week, we're going to go into a whole different topic uh, for this set of sessions. But next week's gonna be a little different. We're only gonna do Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. It will be at 10 a.m., the normal time, 30 minutes. But it'll just be for three days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So Thursday and Friday uh, might uh, be a, a whole different plan for you. Um, and uh, it's gonna be a little different next week. But um, to find out how, you'll have to tune in. So today we're going to talk about empowerment. Sabbath is empowerment. And we hear that word in a variety of different circumstances. Uh, the way that we want to be focusing on it here is really a different way to say empowerment for our, the benefit of Sabbath is to strengthen for service. Sometimes uh, empowerment can kind of come off as having maybe uh, a politically charged kind of definition or or it can be actually kind of a selfish kind of definition but this is really meant to be totally selfless uh, the idea of being empowered to service for the Lord service to one another and that we need to kind of recharge our batteries sometimes in order to be able to do that so we'll be talking about that today but let's start with our morning prayer we'll begin on page 42 of the prayer book O oh Lord, open thou our lips. And our mouths shall show forth thy praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. O oh, come, let us adore him in the words of the Pascha Nostrum that can be found on page 46. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ is risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. Being made alive indeed, that's really what we need to be able to be strengthened for service, to be able to be empowered to go forth proclaiming the gospel, to spreading the good news, to administer sacraments, to, to relieve the prisoners, to restore the sight to the blind, all of the things, feeding the hungry, these many things that we're called to do, we have to be empowered to do them. And all of these things that we've talked about all week, you know, being transformed, being, having a transition from 
uh, maybe a feeling of despair into it, a feeling of joy and strength, being transformed from some of the ways that are self-serving into the ways that serve others, and being nourished, having our bodies be able to be fortified through good food, plenty of water and other nutrients in our bodies, clean air. It's interesting that today I was reading in the, uh, in the Milwaukee Journal about how there's such a dramatic uh, lowering of emissions and CO2 and different things uh, in our air uh, at the moment because of the condition that we're in, less people driving, less people flying, less people driving big vehicles. All of that adds up. It might be interesting how that may be one of those things that empowers us for service in the future to consider that maybe we don't need to be uh, using as much of that fossil fuel. Maybe we can keep our air cleaner more often. Maybe Father Jeff should walk to the church every day instead of taking the car for one mile, for example. What I want to point out to you in terms of empowerment, uh, I, when I think of the kind of the real pragmatic tools that one might use in the course of Sabbath to, to feel empowered, to be strengthened for service. I think of Living Compass. This is a really a wonderful uh, international organization. It was uh, founded and operated by a former rector of this church, Scott Stoner. And it, it really is, uh, the tagline that they use is, uh, is outfitting for the journey. And I, I love that because it really has an active feel to it. And not in just kind of a easy sense of, oh, I'm going to go on a diet or I'm going to do this or do that, but really in truly a holistic sense. I really believe that in, for, in order for us to be empowered for service, that it has to be truly holistic. It can't be just one part of our uh, person. And so what they do is uh, everything is really built off of this idea of a compass. And I'll show this to you briefly, and we can certainly get a copy to you. We actually have copies of this in our uh, community room available at any time. And the, as you can see, the, the compass, like a regular compass, is divided into four quadrants. And these quadrants really totally, they make up our, our total nature. And what, what really fortifies us, what really gets us ready and empowered to go forward to serve the Lord and to serve one another is the balance of these four. You have heart, soul, strength, and mind. Now we know from all that we have heard that, that the first commandment is that we love God with all of those things, our heart, our soul, our strength, and mind, and that we love our neighbor as ourselves. Well, the soul is really something that if, you, if we want to dive a little deeper into that word, it's really a sense of spirituality, and it also is a function of rest and play. Very interesting way to look at it, but a very real one. And then you have strength, which is a combination of care for the body and resilience. And we have mind, a sense of vocation and organization, heart, which encompasses our relationships and our emotions. We heard a little bit about that yesterday, about the, or the day before, about the deep nature of our psyche that we refer to as heart. Well, what we're really trying to strive for in this compass is, is a balance of all of these. And the, the Living Compass program is really focused on trying to identify what area, if you look at this again, what area in here, you see there's a gray area and a white area. Well, this is just an example of how one might fill this quadrant in. That within, for example, the area of uh, mind, the balance of vocation and organization. You know, is that an area, for example, that we find ourselves uh, and if, if you look at this as a garden, if this was a four quadrant garden, whatever we water, whatever we give nutrient to is going to benefit and grow. Whatever, whatever we don't water or don't offer 
appropriate nutrient will decay. There's really no standing still, is there? And so the question becomes, as the exercise, what area in this, these four quadrants, what areas am I watering? And when, which ones may I not be? And ideally, we would be giving a good balance of water and nutrient to all four sections. The truth about our humanity is that that's not very common, that we come to the table possibly emphasizing one area more than another. And not that we're going to walk away with an absolutely perfect balance, but maybe we can have more of an observant balance, that we have some kind of a way to evaluate to say, perhaps I've been spending a bit too much time, for, for example, on vocation, and that some of that uh, may be directed, redirected, if you will, over to resilience or even rest and play. Uh, that the whole idea being that as a whole person, that we really are truly more fortified to be able to go out and be empowered or strengthened for service for the Lord and for one another. Why don't we uh, turn to our psalm, and I think you'll hear some of this, a little echoing of this sense of empowerment in this psalm. We'll say it responsibly, and I'll start with the first verse. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I call upon him. The cords of death entangled me. The grip of the grave took hold of me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray you save my life. Gracious is the Lord in righteousness, for God is full of compassion. The Lord watches over the innocent. I was brought very low, and he helped me. Turn again to your rest, O my soul, for the Lord has treated you well. For you have rescued my life from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from stumbling. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. I believed even when I said, I have been brought very low. In my distress, I said, no one can be trusted. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all of his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord, is the death of his servants. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have, been, you have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Hallelujah. It's interesting in that psalm, we can kind of hear the ebb and flow of our lives, finding times that we may be down, that we may be depressed, laid down flat. This is certainly one of those trying times, isn't it? We want to go out and do so many things. So many things have really turned into disappointment, even grand disappointment, takeaways, things that leave us feeling a bit bereft. And certainly, of course, the illness that people are experiencing, the tremendous care that is required to save them, and sadly, those who are departed because of this coronavirus. There's a lot of that that you hear in the psalm, that, that when we get down to those lower depths in our lives, that we need to reach down for a sense of empowerment. We need to reach down deeply into that rest that we've experienced with the transition, the transformation, the nutrition, all of the things that we do to praise and thank God. Because in that psalm, you can hear that so much about what brings us out of those depths out of those darker times 
is to really reach out in prayer, in praise, in thanksgiving. There's a second part of the living compass model I want to point to, to you. And, and I think this is a really particularly helpful one because so much of what we have to do to empower ourselves is to get out of what would be referred to as our comfort zone. Now, it's pretty safe to say that our comfort zone has been turned completely upside down with this coronavirus. But the question in terms of relating that to empowerment and going forward is, do we return, do we fashion it, I should say, to a new version of our own comfort zone? Or do we become empowered by it? And that would mean going into the growth zone. And I want to show you this particular um, graph. I hope that you can see it okay. But you'll see that in the course of these, this big circle, it's really actually three circles. And the center circle represents that comfort zone. It's that stuff that we find comfortable, that we're not taking excessive risks, that we have repetition, uh, that we have comfort, and that all of the different things uh, that kind of hold us into place. But then the, out, the next outer ring is that growth zone, that we really have to step into that. And I, stepping into the growth zone really means coming out of our comfort zone, even if it's just for a little bit. Now you'll notice that the outer ring is called the panic zone. And the problem that we can face sometimes is that in our trying to step out of the growth zone, if we try to do things that are really uh, alarming to us, we can quickly find ourselves in a panic zone only to return back. So the, 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 the exercise then is to find out in what ways can we step outside of that comfort zone, particularly in a time like this, that is an opportunity to grow, that perhaps we do take more walks, that we read different things, that we spend time in nature just at peace, maybe some silence. It's interesting how, for many of us, silence is not part of our comfort zone, that that can really be maybe even a little frightening, that we're compelled to fill that si silence with something, anything. And if we don't, we can find ourselves right in the panic zone. So it's all a very human kind of ebb and flow. But I think being conscious of it, being aware of what is it that really defines my comfort zone. And in this sense of Sabbath, in this opportunity of taking some time, taking some energy and focusing it toward what how can I use this as an opportunity for growth? Not in a selfish way, not in kind of a grow my bank account or grow some other kind of self-serving thing kind of way, but how can I use this time as an opportunity for growth that helps me strengthen for service, that helps me to be empowered to adhere genuinely and lovingly to those two great laws, of loving God with all of my mind, soul, strength, body, and to love one another, and to show that love in praxis, in action. The people right now that are struggling just to have food on their table, perhaps, or we see a lot of situations in the city where being confined indoors is leading to domestic violence. What kind of things can we do, even creative things, we're working right now, for example, with City on a Hill, where we have our little mission outpost in the city. We supplied them with 50 Jesus story books. And we're working on, right now, we're working with them on how, once those books get in the hands of the children, how we can help them to read from a distance. We've been doing a literacy initiative face-to-face, -face, which has really been marvelous. And it's really helped a lot of the kids down there to advance in their reading skills. Many of them are two and three grades behind. But if we just send the book in the mail or if we drop it off at their home, that by itself will not really propel them into advancing their reading. So we're looking at recording some of the stories, reading them aloud, 
possibly in a venue like this, but we're just trying to figure out creative ways that we can get outside of that comfort zone that we were used to and that we can still deliver and be empowered for service and do it in a way that doesn't thrust people into the panic zone, including the people that we serve. It's all easier said than done, just like so many things that we talk about. But when we have that moment of Sabbath, which we really are gifted at this particular time with some particular moments of Sabbath, I ask you to consider, are we taking the busy times of the past and trying to replace them with other busyness? Or are we taking an opportunity to come out of our comfort zone spiritually in our relationship with God, in our relationship with one another, and doing it in a way that propels growth and not panic that retreats us back? I want to read to you our reading today is from Paul's letter to the Colossians. And I think you'll hear some of the sense of this uh, in this this particular reading starts in the, it's uh, chapter one, starting in the ninth verse. And it really comes really right after Paul's typical salutation to the uh, Colossians. And um, he really kind of gets right to the matter. He says, for this reason, since the day we heard it, we have not ceased praying for you and asking that you may be fulfilled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, as you bear fruit in every good work, and as you grow in the knowledge of God. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power, and may you be prepared to endure everything with patience, while joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints and in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved son in whom we have redemption and the forgiveness of sins. This is a really wonderful reminder in this letter that really all things that we have that really add up to this notion of Sabbath which was we heard yesterday is possibly the hardest but most important commandment of all to adhere to it, to keep it holy, meaning that we lift it up to God, that we lift ourselves up to God, that the, that the faith and spiritual transition and the deep kind of transformation we experience as a person and the nourishment that we receive are all coming from God and that in our thanks and praise and our prayers that we lift it back up. It's a really marvelous thing when you think about it. It's a great cycle. And in the cycle itself is how we can find ourselves empowered or strengthened for service. There's actually a wonderful hymn. It's one of my favorite Eucharistic hymns, actually. Uh, it is hymn number 312. And it starts off with strengthened for service. It's only three verses and it goes like this. Strength, strengthen for service, Lord, the hands that holy things have taken. Let ears that now have heard thy songs to clamor never waken. Lord, may the tongues which holy sang keep free from all deceiving. The eyes which saw thy love be bright, thy blessed hope perceiving. The feet that tread thy hallowed courts from light do thou not banish. The bodies by thy body fed with thy new life replenish. It's a great image, being fed by the Lord. We typically have that on Sundays as a Eucharist. Sadly, because of this coronavirus situation, we haven't been able to for a couple months. It's something that I really yearn for, and I know that you do too. And we will get back to that. But I think that what we have experienced and being fed by the Lord and being called out of our comfort zone into some growth is something that will carry us through and that will fortify us and empower us to his service. We'll continue with our prayers. 
on page 54 of the prayer book. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee. And we worship thy name ever, world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy be upon us. As our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. Almighty God, whose dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we walking in the way of the cross may find it none other than the way of life and peace through the same, thy son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O heavenly Father, in whom we live and move and have our being, we humbly pray thee so to guide and govern us by thy Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget thee, but may remember that we are ever walking in thy sight through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite your prayers and intercessions today. If you have anybody in particular that you would like to have us pray for, someone that you feel really needs to have that empowerment, might feel that they may feel down, maybe, maybe even feel inadequate, Pray that they may be truly inspired, empowered, and strengthened for service of God and one another. If you have someone in particular, put the name in the chat line and we will pray for them. Pray for all of those who continue to deal with the COVID-19 illness. Pray especially for those who are at great risk being on the front lines of this. We hope that they are truly strengthened in body, mind, spirit, in every way. We pray for our children who really struggle right now in many cases to continue on in their own learning and their own formation. For those especially that don't have the means to have distance learning we pray that they will be lifted up. We pray that people that are confined to their homes have a sense of peace, that they don't resort to domestic violence to, to cure their ills. We pray today, especially for Michael, Susan, Elizabeth, Nance, who's having her final chemo treatment here next Thursday. Pray for Julie, for her continued recovery, her husband, Matt, and their family. And pray for Jenny, for her continued recovery, and Will and their family. And pray for Ken and Betsy, Kathy, Tom, Deanna, Helen, Leon, Tommy, Ryan and Stephanie, Tony, Fred. Pray for Gerda, Jane's mom, at Alexian Village having significant difficulties. Pray for Tony, Fred, Ella, Jenna, Heidi, Joyce, Michelle, Connor, 
Elliot, Linda, Holly, Andrew, Kathy and Dick, Patrick, Shirley, Marisa and Betty, Grace, Kathy, her son Kwame, his children, Kaya and Khalees, Nels, Claire, Brian, Pam, Jim, Rob, James and Mary, Bill and Sue, Floyd, Bonnie, David, Betsy, Kate and Jerry, Becky, Diane, Carolyn, Donna, Nancy, Jackson, and Ann. I ask you to lift up a special prayer for our dear friends Owen and MJ, who yesterday celebrated 60 years of marriage. They were married right here at St. Christopher's 60 years ago by Father Stimson, first rector of this church. May they be lifted up for years and decades to come and be strengthened for service of their own. I would like to close today with our prayer attributed to St. Francis. I think you'll hear in this a whole lot of echoing of all that we talked about all week long, the ways that we are fortified by Sabbath, balanced in our spirituality and our lives, and coming out of our comfort zone into a place of growth, much like St. Francis himself did so many years ago. This is found on page 833 of the prayer book. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, and to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. With that, I pray for you to have a peaceful, good weekend. Hopefully it stays nice out as it is this morning. Get out and get fresh air and be at one with nature. And we'll look forward to seeing you on that topic, nature. We'll see you on Monday at 10.